Okay, now that you have the portal branded as your company with your logo and your color scheme and any customizations that you want, now it's time to add the domain. So you have a lot of different options. You can use a dedicated domain, you can use a subdomain um, you know, from your current domain, or you can use a default domain with your own subdomain. So to put your own personalized URL, and so in this case, I want app.wayneindustries.live. So we're gonna come back here. Putting your domain in here doesn't do anything unless you've actually added your domain to the system. It is important to note that when we do put our domain in here, uh, you're not going to want to put HTTPS or www. It just needs to be the root of your domain and subdomain if you choose to have a subdomain. So in this case, I want to do wayneindustries.live. So the first step is to come over here under controls, settings, domains. And here you're going to add a domain. So you're going to click add domain. Uh, same thing here. The only difference is, is that you're not actually putting the domain you want for the portal. You're putting the root of the domain. And the reason for this is, one, we need to install SSL. Two, we need to install email approval or DKM keys and SPF records. And that all needs to go on your REIT domain. Even if you're using a subdomain, all of our settings um, will not affect your root domain and where it's hosted if you're not planning on moving your whole domain to us. Um, so it's important that in this field that you only put the root domain. So I'm doing wayneindustries.live. Even though I want app dot, doesn't matter. Put in the root domain just like that. So I'm going to hit add. Now this is going to create uh, the entry of the domain and put this in this table. The next step is you're going to need to either click right here or click on the edit button. So as you can see, it's not active and we're going to go in and make it active. So go ahead and click on the domain. And so here you have several different records uh, that you can put in. The first set, the A record, this is called a wildcard DNS record, uh, A record. And so what this is, is it means any subdomain on your DNS that is not named, right? So anything, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, if it's not named on your DNS, you're simply pointing that to your portal. Why that's beneficial is if you choose to have multiple subdomains for like previews of your funnels, or maybe you're gonna have multiple funnels with actual subdomains of your main domain, or you may have uh, additional parent accounts or additional uh, customers who wanna brand their own portal, and so you wanna provide them a subdomain of your actual domain. So this doesn't affect your website at all. Um, it's actually a pretty easy record to set up, and it's pretty powerful when you start looking at it, especially if you're gonna set up like agent-based sites on subdomains or legion networks on subdomains that you just have the freedom of using subdomains throughout the system. And then the next record is your CNAME record for your SSL certificate. These are the two records that are the most important. If you're not planning on moving over your entire domain, so you just wanna use subdomains, then you do not need to set up this record. However, if you wanna move and point everything to our platform or your platform, you would need to set up this additional A record. So in this case, I'm gonna go out to GoDaddy, uh, is where I have my domain, uh, wayneindustries.live, and I'm gonna grab this host right here, and I'm gonna come into GoDaddy. So you're probably pretty familiar with this. If you've set up a brand new URL, it's parked. Um, in this case, I'm, I'm actually gonna move the whole domain over, so I'm going to edit the main at record, and instead of being parked, I'm gonna point that to the IP address that's given in the portal. I'm gonna hit save. Next, I'm going to add the wildcard entry. And so all that is is an asterisk, so it's an A record. The name is an asterisk. The value is that IP address. I'm gonna hit add record. So this means that anything that I don't have named, right? I could have, you know, Joe Bob, I could have uh, Bruce, I could have app, I can have anything put in here as a subdomain. You may have a lot of different subdomains that you've set up for other systems. This wildcard entry is the last thing that's used. That means if it's not in this name section, it will then send traffic to our platform, which we then pick up based on what you set in our system. So it is a powerful record. Uh, if you've never set one up, it will not affect your current domain or anything that you have set. So the next step is to grab the Acme Challenge. So I'm gonna just grab this host, and then you're gonna come over here and click Add, and C name and do Acme Challenge. Now, one thing, if your host does not provide for your DNS the ability to put 
underscore here or underscore here. Simply submit a ticket with them. They'll add it for you. This is a very common uh, SSL certificate and setup. So they absolutely support it. They may not let you do it, but they will definitely do it for you. So hit add record. Uh, what's important here is that you do not remove this record. Um, this record auto renews for you. So if you remove this, you will have SSL issues three months from now. So that we use this to auto renew you. So make sure that this is put on and um, it, it stays on. So now um, I have everything set. I have this entire domain coming to us with an at record. Uh, I have the wildcard domain uh, A record going to us and I have the SSL certificate set up or I mean the C name record set up. So now what I wanna do is wait, wait 10 minutes. Usually this is pretty instant if you're on GoDaddy, but in this case, we're gonna go ahead and wait 10 minutes. So I'll be right back just so the DNS can get set um, um, for this record. Okay, I've waited 10 minutes now. Uh, depending on your DNS, it may take up to 24 hours, sometimes 48 hours, rare cases. Usually if you're on GoDaddy, it's, it's pretty instant. So I just say wait 10 minutes and try it out. So in this case, I'm gonna come over here back to my domain. Once you have those records set, you're gonna to wanna to click activate SSL. Uh, this will put it into the queue, all right? And so that queue runs every minute. And once you have it set to activate SSL, you can hit refresh and wait for the actual status to, to, to be picked up. Um, again, this, this process probably takes about two minutes. And if you have an issue, um, it'll say error. So error simply means is that your DNS is not updated and um, you just have to wait again and push activate SSL. Now, one of the things here is that, you know, if you press this button twice or try to reactivate it again, um, it'll go through that process again. It'll see that SSL is already installed. Uh, in this case, I only clicked it once and it's processing. And so I'm gonna hit refresh and now it's active. Um, so that process takes, again, about two minutes. You can continue to hit refresh on, on your update status or just click activate SSL and then come back to your domains tab, you know, in about two or three minutes. Um, in this case, it's active. One of the things you'll know always um, with our system is if it's pointing to us. If I go out there and I put this domain in, you're going to get a 404 page not found. This is our internal system saying, hey, this domain's pointing to us. Uh, but it's not actually mapped to anything. And so now at this point, you're gonna have to map the domain. Remember we talked about a subdomain mapping for the branding. So now that my domain's installed, it's active, um, I'm gonna go ahead and map it. And when you map your domain uh, within the platform, you're gonna come over here to settings, uh, I'm sorry, system. You're gonna come over here to branding. And then here, I've already put this in, so it is already mapped. But this is where you're going to put your subdomain in, in this exact same format. So in this case, I have app.wayneindustries.live. And so I'm going to grab that and just come out here to my browser. And then now it should pull. So you see that my logo is just massive here, right? And obviously, I don't want that. Um, the ideal width for your logos is 250 uh, pixels wide. So in this case, I'm gonna go and update my image in my file manager to resize this so it fits properly. So I'm gonna click on my file icon here. I can also click here if I wanted to, but you can just click right here on your file manager. And so in this case, I'm gonna grab my logo and I'm gonna click edit. And so it's cool on a resize option, you can just click here and, and you know, as I mentioned, 250 uh, pixels wide, I can just hit 250 and click out and hit apply and then hit save. And now my file is resized for me automatically. And now I can come out here and hit refresh and I'm on cache. So if you know how to uncache yourself, now you can have your resized logo. So now everything fits. Now I'm on my own URL. I can access uh, with my own personalized URL and get into the system.